Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome to my Astro community. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about where and how you will meet your future spouse or soulmate. Now obviously, astrology can predict a lot of things. And one of the things it can predict is the circumstances in which you meet your life partner. And this method is very accurate and it's almost scarily accurate. So let's just get into it. So step number one and the most important step to in order to calculate this information is that you're going to want to calculate your sidereal birth chart. Now this might go over a lot of people's heads. So I will put a screen cap on the screen of how to calculate your sidereal chart. Um, and it's essentially going to look like your Vedic chart. If you know your Vedic chart by heart, um, then you can just go to the next step. But if you don't know it, then you need to calculate it. So I'll just put it on the screen really quickly so you guys can calculate it. So once you have your sidereal birth chart, Again, we're using a sidereal chart. We're not using uh, the Western tropical chart. We're using the sidereal or Vedic one. Is that now you want to look at your seventh house. So specifically, we're going to look at the sign that your seventh house is in. And even more specifically, we're going to look at the seventh house ruler. So your seventh house ruler is going to be the planet that rules the sign of your seventh house. I'll put a picture of the rulerships on the screen. I'll also link above um, my rulerships video if you guys are totally lost. But on this picture on the screen, obviously, let's say you have a Scorpio seventh house. That means Mars is your seventh house ruler. If you have a Pisces seventh house, that means Jupiter is your seventh house ruler. If you have a Capricorn seventh house, that means Saturn is your seventh house ruler. So we're going to look at the planet that rules your seventh house to calculate this information. So step three, again, we're still looking at our sidereal chart. We're still looking at the seventh house ruler, the planets. And in step three, we're going to look at the house that this planet is in. So now we're going to see what house that planet is in. So now for the fourth step, now that we understand where the house ruler is, um, we're going to see what sign is opposite to that house. And then that leads me to my fifth step. And that sign that is opposite to your seventh house ruler is going to show you the circumstances under which you meet your spouse. So I know a lot of you guys are probably like, what does that even mean? But basically each sign has different themes and I'm going to talk about each sign. Um, so for example, if your seventh house ruler is Jupiter, right? Let's just use Jupiter as an example. That means your seventh house is in the sign of Sagittarius or Pisces, right? Um, so we're going to look at the house Jupiter is in. So let's say Jupiter is in your fourth house and then the sign opposite to the Fourth house would be the 10th house, right? So you're going to look at your 10th house sign. And in this example, let's say your 10th house sign is Aries. So that means you might meet your spouse or future um, potential life partner in an Aries themed way. So specifically, you might meet your spouse at a sporting event. You might meet them if you play sports, if you're an athlete, um, you might meet them when you're doing some sort of physical activity. Let's say you like to run marathons. Let's say you like to bike or hike um, or do very physically active things. Uh, Aries does rule physical activity, right? So you might meet them under those circumstances. And then again, you might meet them dancing. You might meet them while you're just taking a walk, uh, while you're exercising. You might meet them at the gym. And I would go as far to say maybe you might meet them like at an amusement park too, um, because Aries does rule the sense of thrill and risk taking. Um, so just get creative with the thoughts here. Or if you've already met your spouse and you met them like in one of the circumstances I mentioned, comment down below. But really, you can get really creative about what the circumstances would be. But really, it's just like the themes of that sign that is opposing your seventh house ruler. And then also with the Aries example, you can think of like the animal that rules Aries is a ram. So let's say you like meet um, your spouse and there's like a ram, like maybe not the literal animal, but let's say there's like ram symbolism wherever you are. Let's say you're like going on a run or a hike and there's like a Dodge Ram, like the car. Um, and you meet your spouse near that car and you see the Ram. Or, or let's say your spouse has like a Dodge Ram car. Um, either way, if there's like Ram symbolism somewhere, um, then that's the circumstances where you might meet your spouse. And then for Taurus, uh, Taurus does rule luxury. It does rule uh, materialism. It rules banks. It rules um, finance too. So if your seventh house ruler is opposing the sign of Taurus, um, that means you might meet your spouse. I would say like at a spa, maybe when you're shopping. Um, if you're doing anything that involves like 
money like materialism specifically um so like shopping making big purchases you might meet, meet them at a bank um your spouse might literally be a banker depending on your chart but just think of these very taurus themes as well uh taurus is also ruled by the bull so maybe you meet them in a circumstance where there's like bull symbolism around you um like you meet them at a parade and there's like a bull um uh walking by um or or even in or even in like New York, they have like that bull statue like in the financial district or wherever. Um, but you can meet your spouse, like let's say you meet your spouse near that statue or you meet your spouse near a bull statue. And that's more of a literal manifestation, but just generally you might meet them in a way that is very Taurus themed. And then of course, another major Taurus theme is food, right? So you might meet them at like a restaurant or um, at some sort of luxury um, dinner or event or something like that. I think Taurus really involves a sense of luxury. It involves a sense of food, pleasure, indulgence, uh, materialism, shopping, money. So any of those themes you can meet your spouse under. Okay, so let's talk about Gemini opposing your seventh house ruler. So if the sign of Gemini is opposing your seventh house ruler, um, you might meet your spouse in a very Gemini themed way, or there might be Gemini symbolism wherever you meet your spouse. So for example, you might meet your spouse through friends. You might meet your spouse while you are socializing, while you are talking to people. Um, this is definitely a placement where it's like you might meet like you might just be talking to someone and then someone joins this conversation and then they know someone and somehow you just meet them through like a chain of people. And this also indicates you might meet them like at work um, or anywhere where you're doing some sort of communicating or socializing or potentially even writing. Uh, you might meet them, you could meet them online I would say. It really depends on the entire chart um but either way some kind of communication is going to be involved when you do meet your spouse and i would say the major theme i sense from this is meeting them through someone else meeting them through word of mouth <gasps> this is kind of like the placement where it's like you hear about your spouse or you know about the reputation before you even meet them and you don't even know it you know what i mean like you can have a friend that always talks about somebody um and you just kind of listen like halfway listen and then one day you meet that person and that person is your spouse and it's because you uh kind of met them verbally before you met them physically and then lastly you might meet your spouse with um, some sort of Gemini symbolism so Gemini rules like the twins um, Gemini is all about that double symbolism like the mirror right um, so you might meet them where it's like maybe there's like twins around like literally you might meet like like your spouse might be a twin or you meet them through a person who is a twin or you meet your spouse like or when you meet your spouse, there's some sort of Gemini symbolism around you. If you look at the Gemini, Gemini um, symbol, it's like two pillars. So maybe you meet your spouse and there's like two pillars, like at the, um, I don't know, networking event you're at. Um, either way, there's this very heavy Gemini symbolism of twins or double. So just think about that when you're meeting your spouse. If you already met your spouse, comment down below. And if there's any symbolism relating to Gemini, comment down below. <laughs> So if your seventh house ruler is opposite of the sign of cancer, that means you can meet your spouse in maybe like literally at your house. Um, maybe if it's not your house, think of like, mm, I can almost like imagine like a housewarming party or you meet your spouse at like, um, like an open house event or somewhere like it's somebody's house. Maybe somebody like your friend or family member throws a house party or something like that. You can meet them literally at a house because cancer does rule home. But even in a more metaphorical sense, you can meet them maybe near your hometown. You can literally meet them on your home land. Um, anything like that relating to home. It doesn't have to literally be a house or your home, but it can mean metaphorically or symbolically a home, homeland, uh, somewhere where you reside. Or maybe even like the city that you are originally from or the country you are originally from. And then Cancer also can rule vehicles too. So maybe you meet them at like a car show um, or in a car or um, something having to do with car symbolism potentially. And then another way too with this Cancer theme is like maybe, I don't know, maybe through your mom or your mom's friends or uh, something having to do with your mom. Like maybe your mom, there's a housewarming party and then somebody brings like somebody there and that, that's the person that's your spouse. And then almost too with Cancer symbolism, the moon rules Cancer, right? So Cancer does rule kind of music. So maybe you meet them in a space with music or you meet them at a concert or like a show or something like that or like a... 
mm, concert at like a club like a jazz club or it doesn't have to be a huge concert it could literally just be like going to a farmer's market and there's like music there and you meet a spouse there and another aspect to this with cancer uh, opposite your seventh house ruler is that you might meet your spouse near the ocean cancer does rule water the ocean it's a water sign um so you might meet them near the ocean you might meet them at like a seafood restaurant because cancer is ruled by the crabs so you might meet them um under a circumstance where there's like crab symbolism somewhere even if it's like really like simple like let's say uh you meet them somewhere and the cashier at whatever place you're at um is wearing like a crab shirt like that could it could also manifest that way or like you're somewhere and you meet your spouse and like somebody like random is wearing like crab socks or uh they're selling crabs somewhere or there's like a seafood restaurant any crab symbolism really might be relevant here. Um, any seafood symbolism, um, anything having to do with the ocean as well, you can meet your spouse at. So if your seventh house ruler is opposite the sign of Leo, that means you might meet your spouse in a very Leo themed way, or there might be Leo symbolism where you meet your spouse. So with the theme of Leo, I feel like it's pretty obvious, but obviously Leo, it does rule parties. It rules fun. Uh, it rules dating and romance. It also rules children too. So how this can manifest personally for you is that potentially you meet your spouse at a party. Um, Leo rules entertainment, right? It rules theater too. So maybe you meet them at a theater, um, at a theater event. Maybe you are into theater and you meet your spouse through like the, um, what is it called? Like the cast and crew. Um, or maybe you meet your spouse at the movie theater or at some entertainment event. Like maybe you meet them at a concert or you meet them at a somebody's party, somebody's birthday, um, anything like that, anyone's anniversary too. You have a really good chance of meeting them at a very uh, fancy event or ultimately at a celebration of some sort. And then also with the symbolism aspect, Leo does rule children. So maybe when you meet your spouse, you're at like some sort of event that is family friendly, that has a lot of children there. Uh, maybe it's somebody's birthday or wedding or anniversary um, and there's just children there. And then also what rules Leo is the lion. So maybe when you meet your spouse there's like literally like a lion statue there or a lion painting or you meet them like I don't know where there's like a live lion like on a safari or at the zoo um either way there might be like leo symbolism around where you are and then also what symbolizes leo is the color gold um the sun also symbolizes leo so maybe you meet them in a very like, I don't know, maybe like gold is around you somehow. Maybe there's like a golden lion statue where you are. I can almost imagine like you meet them, like let's say you go to an event or something, like uh, let's say it's just like an anniversary or wedding party um, and the venue has like lion statues outside and there's like, and the lion statues are gold. That would be like the ultimate manifestation of you meeting your spouse. And let's say you meet your spouse at that same party. That would be like an ultimate alignment with the Leo theme here. Um, so obviously just take it as it resonates, but just remember that you might meet your spouse under the circumstances that are very Leo themed or have Leo symbolism. So if your seventh house ruler is opposite of Virgo, that means you might meet your spouse in a very Virgo themed way or the circumstances in which you meet your spouse, there are Virgo themes present or Virgo symbolism present. So with Virgo, so if your seventh house ruler is opposite the sign of Virgo, obviously um, some Virgo themes would be work. So you might meet your spouse at work. Uh, you might meet your spouse when you're literally working um, or doing some sort of service. Um, so let's say you work at a job that is service oriented. I can imagine you meeting your spouse at like, let's say you're like a waitress or something. You would meet your spouse while you're um, on the job, while you're hosting something, while you're serving a table. But even more generally, you could just be meeting them at work. You might meet them at like a hospital because Virgo does rule healing. Uh, it does rule, it doesn't rule hospitals literally, but it does rule healing uh, and the medical field too. So you maybe you meet them um, while you're in a hospital. Maybe your spouse is a nurse of some kind or you meet someone that is a nurse or that was a nurse or a doctor um, or even like a medicinal healer. I could see you meeting them at maybe, um, what do you call it? Like a magic shop, like a... Um, spiritual shop where they sell like healing potions or herbs or crystals. You can meet them sort of like at a metaphysical shop too. 
But ultimately, I do see this manifesting. Like the major themes I see is that you will meet them while you're working or wor while you're doing something with your hands. It might not be a job necessarily, but you might be just like busy. Uh, Virgo does rule this sense of busyness. So you might just be busy and then someone catches your eye or somebody just comes up to you. Uh, it's not necessarily like you'll just be chilling and like randomly run into someone. I feel like you'll definitely be working um, and then meet someone that way. And also with the symbolism, uh, the symbol of Virgo is the Virgin. Um, so how this might manifest is that when you meet your spouse, there might be like virgin, uh, like symbolism and obviously like the Virgin Mary, like that, you know, those change chains people wear with like the Virgin Mary on it. Um, or one of those deities that are like the Virgin, like that symbolism can be present. Like, let's say you work somewhere and there's like a church across and there's like a Virgin Mary on the top of the church. Um, and then you meet your spouse at work. That would be like the ultimate manifestation of this Virgo theme we have going here. Okay, so if your seventh house ruler is opposite the sign of Libra, this means you will meet your spouse in a very Libra themed way, or when you meet your spouse, there are Libra symbols present. So with Libra themes, you might meet them in a way that is relating to justice or law. Like you can meet them at a courthouse, you can meet them at, maybe you meet them under some circumstance that relates to politics, or maybe when you're like somewhere or maybe at work or something, there's like the, um, or maybe when you meet them, it's during like the election part of the year. Um, or there's like politicians on the TV, something having to do with law or justice, you might meet them under that theme. And your spouse can maybe literally be involved in that field or you yourself can be involved in that field and maybe you just meet your spouse at work. And then also, and then also Libra does rule beauty too. So maybe you meet them like on your way to like a hair appointment or getting your nails done or um, getting a facial or something like that. You might meet them under some circumstance that relates to beauty, uh, maybe a circumstance that relates to indulgence too. So maybe you're like eating or shopping um, or doing something very um, indulgent or kind of materialistic. Um, you might meet your spouse in that dynamic. And then when it comes to Libra symbolism, what rules Libra, what's the symbol for Libra is the scales. So this means when you meet your spouse, there might be some Libra symbolism around you. There might be like a literal scale around you. Maybe it's like a weight scale or if it's in like a market or a farmer's market or something, maybe it's like a, like a food scale thing. And like I said, there's this theme too of like justice and law. So maybe you meet them and there's like a like a scale statue outside the courthouse or something like that. Or you're just somewhere where there's like a scale statue, scale symbolism, scale mural, anything like that. Um, anything having to do with the symbolism of Libra, which does have to do with scales and balance, you might see that when you meet your spouse, like literally in that moment. Okay, so if your seventh house ruler is opposite of Scorpio, this means when you meet your spouse, you might meet them under circumstances that are very Scorpio themed. And then literally when you meet them, you might see like very Scorpio themed symbols around you. So first things first, um, this can manifest as obviously Scorpio is about what is hidden, right? So you might meet them in a very secret way. You might not meet them in like public. Obviously you might meet them in public, but you might meet them in a very kind of low key way, not in a way that's very um, ostentatious or very obvious. And also with this placement, I feel like you might meet them at night too. I feel like Scorpio rules like darkness and stuff. So you might meet them at night, at nighttime. Um, maybe you literally like meet them in the dark. Then this might manifest as you meeting them on the behalf of someone else. Uh, Scorpio does rule other people's resources or other people, uh, or like intimacy and stuff like that. It does rule other people in some way. Um, so you might meet them through a friend. You might meet them because your friend is having some dinner party and then you happen to be there. Overall, you might meet them on behalf of someone else. Um, and then you might meet them in a very secret way, maybe literally in the dark or at nighttime. And then with Scorpio symbolism, obviously the symbol for Scorpio is a scorpion. So maybe when you meet them, there's like scorpion symbolism around you. Or like, you, let's say you meet them like at a concert late at night and then the person next to you has like a scorpion shirt and then you meet your spouse like 10 minutes later. Um, that's very like on par with this placement. Um, but either way, you might meet them um, like I said, there might be scorpions around you, literally, scorpion symbolism, scorpion, maybe there's like a scorpion um, statue or scorpio mural or something like that where it's like scorpion symbolism is very prominent around you, like literally in the moment when you meet your spouse. 
Okay, so if your seventh house ruler is opposite of Sagittarius, this means you'll meet your spouse in a very Sagittarius themed way, or when you meet them, there's gonna be very Sagittarius themed symbols around you. So this means you might meet your spouse while you are traveling, because Sagittarius does rule travel. Uh, you might meet them at university, at a uh, institution of higher knowledge, uh, maybe at college. Uh, it doesn't have to be university, it can be like a community college, it can be maybe high school, uh, maybe grad school or your master's program. Either way, you might meet them in a setting that is educational um, or that does involve education on some level. And then of course, with travel, you might just meet them traveling at the airport, maybe when you go on vacation or holiday, uh, anything like that that involves travel, you might meet them. So when it comes to symbolism and the symbols you might see around you when you meet your spouse or a partner, um, is that the symbol for Sagittarius is the centaur. So a centaur, I'll put a picture of it on the screen, it is that half horse, half human. Um, so potentially you might see that symbolism around you when you meet your spouse. Like maybe somebody's wearing a shirt with a centaur on it or maybe like the place you're in has like a centaur statue or like maybe you're traveling and there's like some weird centaur statue or like a centaur mural around you or maybe you're watching a movie somewhere and there's like a centaur in the movie. I know in Harry Potter there's like a scene with like just centaurs in it so it really depends but but if you think about it in a literal sense you might see some Sagittarius symbolism. Also the Sagittarius symbol is the archer or the arch I guess. If you're somewhere on like an archery field or uh, maybe the person you know, maybe you go to like a club where they do archery or uh, anything involving archery you might see a symbolism of. Maybe you um, go somewhere, maybe you're traveling or you're at school learning archery or maybe when you're at school there's like a, a building with like an archer, archery symbolism on it, a statue that is like archery symbolism, um, maybe a picture around you, somebody's wearing a shirt with an archer on it, um, anything like that. You can even literally just see that symbol of like a bow and arrow. Um, that's another major thing, like literally you might see a bow and arrow like wherever you are, or that symbolism might be present when you do meet your spouse. Okay, so if your seventh house ruler is opposite Capricorn, this means you might meet your spouse in a very Capricorn themed way or you might uh, see Capricorn symbolism around you when you meet your spouse. So with the theme of Capricorn, you might meet your spouse like in a building, which I know sounds kind of random, but uh, Capricorn does rule structures. Uh, it does rule uh, structures of some sort. So maybe you meet them like in an office building, maybe when you're at work, uh, maybe you're, uh, I can see this manifesting as your spouse being like your boss or something or an authority of you. Uh, your spouse might be older than you too. Overall, Capricorn does rule the sense of structure. It does rule work. Um, so maybe you meet them that way. And then I can also see this manifesting as like a monastery or some kind of building that people go to. Uh, mm, I wouldn't say church, but I would just say some sort of building um, that people maybe congregate at, um, like office building, monastery. Um, hmm, I'm trying to think of anything creative. Or maybe even like an amphitheater, like you know those amphitheaters that have like the structured so it's like the sound. But that's what I can think of right now. If you've met your spouse already, comment down below and like tell me where you met them so I can think of like Capricorn themed places. But anyway, um, and then we look at the symbol of Capricorn. The symbol of Capricorn is a goat. So maybe you literally meet your spouse um, and there's like goat symbolism present. Uh, maybe there's like a goat statue or maybe you literally meet them like there's like a goat, I don't know where you would be, but like a farm or something um, or maybe someone near you is wearing like a goat shirt maybe there's like a goat mural um, anything where it's like goat symbolism maybe even mountain symbolism because I feel like um, Capricorn does rule doesn't rule mountains but it rules like that imagery of a mountain um, it rules like the essence of climbing something so maybe when you meet your spouse it is near a mountain or uh, there's mountain symbolism there's goat symbolism um there's structure bone symbolism anything like that okay so if your seventh house ruler is opposite aquarius this means you will meet your spouse in a very aquarius themed way or when you meet them there's going to be aquarius themed symbols present so I can see this manifesting as you meeting your spouse online. Uh, maybe you meet them through the internet. Uh, maybe you even meet them at some something that has to do with technology because Aquarius does rule technology. Um, so maybe you meet them like uh, 
technology event or uh, some sort of, what do you call it? Like, um, or maybe some sort of tech convention. Um, so if you meet them in person, it might be in a technology kind of way or wherever you're meeting, there's like a technology theme there. Um, you might meet them in a very technology advanced place like Japan or the Bay Area because the Bay Area is home to a lot of technology uh, companies. Or you literally might meet them online on Tinder or Bumble or like one of those apps. But overall, I would say that you might meet them in a very unconventional way. This is definitely the placement where it's like, you meet them in the most like random way. Like I feel like your love story might be really, really strange and not traditional at all. Um, so it doesn't have to be the places I mentioned, but it can be just overall very unconventional or very unpredictable. And then when it comes to symbolism, the symbol for Aquarius is the water bearer. Um, so you, I'll put a picture of it on the screen, but you might see that symbolism when you literally meet your spouse. Um, or I would say maybe you meet them around water or I could see you meet, meeting them like at college or something or meeting them, I don't know where, somewhere where there's like a guru or someone teaching you something or a mentor, um, something to having, Anything having to do with knowledge or wisdom, you might meet them under those circumstances. So it really depends. Um, it could be through a meeting, at school. So if your seventh house ruler is opposite the sign of Pisces, this means that you will meet your spouse in a very Pisces themed way, or you might meet them with Pisces symbolism around you. So when it comes to the themes of Pisces, you might meet your spouse when there's like alcohol present because Pisces does rule alcohol, drugs. Um, so maybe you meet them at like a party or uh, somewhere where there's like maybe an open bar. Maybe you literally meet them at a bar um, or you meet them at some sort of get together or anything that involves alcohol in any sense, maybe like a wedding and there's like a bar there um, or maybe there's drugs present where you meet them so potentially you can also meet them at a concert too. Pisces does rule music so maybe you meet them at a concert maybe you meet them at some sort of festival or some sort of club where they're playing music and there's you know music and dancing and stuff like that. Pisces also rules spirituality so maybe you meet them in a very spiritual sense or like a spiritual Mm, meeting or somewhere like maybe you're doing like yoga outside or maybe you're doing like a meditation circle outside and you just meet your partner after that or you meet someone after that or meet someone in that same class as you um, but either way you can meet them in a very spiritual themed way or maybe you go to like a tarot circle or anything that has to do with spirituality really or maybe even like a metaphysical spiritual shop or maybe like a farmer's market where there's like crystals being sold or like a crystal shop too. When it comes to symbolism, the symbol for Pisces is two fish. So of course you can meet them under a circumstance where that symbolism is present. Maybe you go somewhere and there's like that two fish picture on the wall, or maybe there's some sort of fish symbolism around you. Maybe there's like a fish tank somewhere, or you meet them near the ocean or at a seafood restaurant, or potentially you meet them at a place where there's like a fish statue or somebody's wearing like a fish shirt, fish socks, or you meet them like at a deli or something where there's like literally dead fish uh, or at like a, what do you call it? A uh, wharf or like a, where they have like boats and stuff like at the pier, like you can meet them at a pier. So either way, the major ways you can meet your spouse or the places you'll meet them at is under like circumstances that are having to do with music, um, drugs, alcohol, potentially even fish symbolism is around you or um, some sort of spiritual symbolism too, or you meet them in a very spiritual sense or under spiritual circumstances. So, so go ahead and comment down below where you met your spouse if you have one or you feel like the person you're with is like your like soulmate um, or comment down below um, or comment down below the sign that opposes your seventh house and where you think you might meet your spouse.